compass. So it doesn't work. Perfect. My lucky coin. Mwah. Ah, yes. Nothing will escape me now. Got my eye patch. Wait, this doesn't help me. And my hat. Well, Bubbles, I think I'm ready to explore the Facebook Graph API. Sorry, Captain. Here's your hat. Pull up a map. Oh, boy. What's up, everyone? In this video, we're going to be going over the Facebook Graph API Explorer tool. We are going to look at it and its basic functionality and how you can use it to make your life easier when dealing with the Facebook Graph API. The Facebook Graph API Explorer tool is my go-to for when I'm looking at new endpoints, viewing how response data is structured, and debugging issues. The best part is you can do all of this without writing any code. Head over to developers.facebook.com slash tools slash explore. This is the Graph API Explorer dashboard. In order to use this tool, you will need to be registered as a Facebook developer and you also need to have a Facebook app created. I have my ECI test app here that I'm going to be using and I have it open in another tab. Here's my app. You see I have it set to development mode because in development mode, all the permissions are automatically granted to us. If you want your app in live mode, you would have to go through the dreaded Facebook app review process. You have to come over here to permissions and features, select each and every permission that you want and tell Facebook why and exactly how you're going to use that permission. Then you submit your request over here and you wait five to seven days and they will probably reject you, which means you have to go back to the permissions and features tab, give them a better explanation of why and how you're going to use it, and then submit it for another request. So we leave it in development mode and we automatically are granted all the permissions. Now let's look at the Graph Explorer. We have our app set up and we're ready to make some API calls. Here you see we have our request type. We can make a git, post, or a delete. We also have a version dropdown for the version of the API we're going to use. And then we have the part we can edit where we can input the endpoint we want to test out. Over here we have our submit button, but before we can test out an endpoint we need an access token. Now our first goal is to get the user's email and name. Now in order to get those things we need to add the Facebook login to our app. If you don't have it, just go to the products, click add product and add the Facebook login and it will show up here under products. Now that we have our Facebook login, we can get the user's name and their ID. Under get token, you have three options, a user token, which is used to get a user's information, such as their profile information, their photos, and so on. The app token would be used to update the app. In this case, the ECI test app, any settings over in our app dashboard. The page access token is used to access a page on Facebook and get and post information to that page. Here, we're going to do get user access token. Now you see we have a pop-up. It's asking us to authorize ECI test app to use our name and profile picture. Clicking on the view access, you can get a list of what it's requesting. And when we click continue, we now have an access token generated for us. And what this access token can do is get our name and profile picture. And that's it. Up here in the request, we're just going to hit slash me. Do a submit on that. And we get my name back and my app ID. Now we also allow the app to access our picture. If we add on fields here, we can specify any field we want to get back for that user. But only the ones that we granted permissions to. In this case, name and profile picture. So picture is our profile picture. And we click submit. And there's my profile picture. Height, width, and the URL to the picture. Clicking on it will allow me to download it. Let's download that, and there it is. There's my profile picture on Facebook. Now let's try to get the user's email address. We can just type email up here, or you also have the option of searching the list over here in the left sidebar, where you can type in email, click on it, and it will automatically append it to our request. Let's hit submit and see what happens. Looks like there was an error, something went wrong. We did not get the user's email address back, instead we got a debug message field email is only accessible on the user object after the user grants the email permission. Since we do not ask the user for that email permission, we need to add that to our permissions list. Over here, you see there's an add permissions section. Here we can type email, select email, and now we have email under our permissions list. Now we've updated the permissions, so we need to generate a new access token. Click generate access token. Again, we get the pop-up. This time it's saying the test app wants access to your email address. If we grant them access to the email address, now you see our permissions has email and public profile. And we have a brand new access token. Now when we hit submit, our email has been returned because we now have permission from that user to get their email address. One thing to note is these permissions here, the email and public profile are all granted to you when you put your app in live mode. You do not need to go through the dreaded Facebook app review process to get these two things. Anything beyond these permissions though, you do need to submit your app for an app review. Now one thing I like about this app is it does tell you, like we saw in that debug message, exactly what permission you need in order to get that field. Let's add on a few more here just to get an idea. Let's add on my birthday, let's get my first name and my last name. 
and let's see what happens. All right, we got my first name and last name back here. Those are all included in the public profile permission, but we got one debug message. It's telling us that the birthday is only accessible on the user object after the user grants the user birthday permission. This is telling us exactly what we need to do. We need to look for this permission right here, over here under all the permissions. So we drop down the permissions and there's our user birthday. We're gonna select that and we're gonna generate ourselves a new access token. Again, we get the pop-up and now it's asking us for our birthday. Click continue. And now our app also is granted the user birthday permission. Hitting this endpoint one more time, we should see my birthday. There we go, May 13th, 88. Happy birthday to me. Another thing I like about this Explorer tool is you can just click on any ID you see and it will automatically populate the request. Here now we're looking at my user ID, which is just me, and we can do slash feed. And that should give us our timeline and each of the IDs for each of my posts. Now we can also add fields on here and we're going to do a link. We want to get back the link to the post as well. Now one thing you notice is everything else that was previous here went away. If you specify fields, it will return only what you specified along with the ID. Getting rid of the fields will bring back whatever Facebook deems as the default return for that endpoint. In this case, created time, the message, and the ID. So if we do Facebook link and we do message, we should get back the message and a link to the post. Now we can also click on the ID to these posts and it will again update our requests with that endpoint and we're going to specify our fields as link and message. Now we are at the post endpoint and here's the link. If I click on that it should take me to my post on Facebook. Perfect. All right so that's kind of how you can click on the different IDs to get to the different endpoints that there might be. And then we can also click the back button which is nice and we can see our previous requests. We can also jump to our previous requests over here, click on the menu icon on the left, and we can see all of the requests that we have made. Clicking on one will populate the request up here. Click on submit and we're back at our post request. Down here at the bottom of our screen, we have uh, debug information we can copy. So if we copy that, we see just a little bit more details into what happened on the request. We have our curl call up here where we hit our endpoint with our fields, message, and link. Details on the access token we were using, the permissions, the IDs, some query parameters here, and the response we got back along with some more debug information from the Explorer. We also have a get code button here. And we can get code here for Android, iOS, JavaScript, and curl. Then we can save our session, which saves everything we're looking at here on the screen, so we can come back later. And that is going to wrap up our Graph API Explorer tool overview. I hope this was helpful to you guys, and I hope you learned something from this video. I know that the Graph API is a beast, and it can be very confusing. If you guys want me to go into detail into anything else here, leave a comment down below, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and I'll catch you later.